sure. I'll try. Alright. I'll try one. Whatever. I've been waiting to do this video for 16 years. The situation that Donald Marshall describes as far as cloning centers, MK Ultra Monarch Mind Control project involving high levels of occult society members, secret society members, and the high levels of the government, all the way to high levels of what we would call religious or spiritual forces. All throughout history, from the beginning of our history, our civilization, they've been putting symbols, manipulating things, basically deceiving people, in a strange way as well, under the guise of angels working for God. And the stranger conclusion may be that they are the fallen angels, still working for under the command of God, unable to, to go against God or anything. No power over God, but yet we're put in flesh bodies that have the vulnerability where we can give away our soul essence without realizing it even. So then they play the game of taking the soul essence from people. The secret societies have turned it into a business with the belief that if it can be controlled, profited off of, managed, recorded, and turned into a process, that it's essentially not evil. It's simply a tool to get to power and essentially higher levels of knowledge and being and to be able to command in this realm, but it goes against uh, a higher will, power, higher form of spirituality that we basically know as love. What it breaks down into <clears throat> is that uh, it basically all comes down to whatever this black goo substance is. I was informed, I, I talked to people, I talked to them physically, I met with them in my life, physically, there are the highest levels of power that we have in any form of governmental control, or religious control, or even spiritual control, other than the loving aspect. And it comes down to the fact that the process of awakening by utilizing the darker forces drains our heart chakra. It, it shuts it off and stops it from being able to influence our mind. It trains the mind to be power, more powerful than the heart chakra, more powerful than the heart or the emotion, so that the lower parts of the mind can overcome and overtake those aspects of the body and eventually the whole spirit, the whole being. Apparently, the black goo is a form of nanotech, nano, uh, nanotech technology. And it basically spits out a type of form of electronic radiation or radio waves, but they're literally a type of nanotech computer binary essence or something. It's apparently energetic, but it can solidify into this little black goo, literally. And it's the condensed, what we would call negative energy of this realm, of our planet, of our psyche, of our entire psyche of psyche of humanity and all the negative emotions. I'm having trouble starting to figure out how to talk about this. Um, and so this thing, it's passed around the churches, it's passed and passed around through history, it's the black cube, the black stone, the essence of basically dark, conscious darkness. It's apparently a form of AI consciousness that does not contain a trinary or any type of pattern that includes heart or emotions. Humans, or I guess I was explaining to me, they're a trinary consciousness because of that, it basically extends into a, an infinite pattern of ascending. You can have, with a pattern of three, like with time, you can have an infinite pattern of continuation. With binary consciousness, it's limitation. It's limited. It's linear. It's ones and zeros, and it doesn't have the complexity that allows for emotional experience. So a being who is entirely binary consciousness won't have compassion. We equate this to the reptilian brain and the reptilian a form of animals on the planet because uh, that's essentially the complexity within their existence. 
eat, eat the young and the weak, eat anything in, in, in your way. And there is, it's not like don't feel bad because you're doing that. There is no emotional aspect to that. You don't have to not feel bad doing that if you only have reptilian activation, you know, in your system. I'm not sure about the reality of the other beings, which do seem to either have ability to uh, project psychically and take on any form, including a human form, but I don't know whether they're actually, as they sometimes appear, which is as full on enough consciousness to manipulate and be devious, and that is the only way they can get a, a rise out of the situation. Whereas a human's in a way the opposite, because if you're fully heart, you know, filled loving, being devious and deceptive and getting what you want through force would simply make you feel better. That's how it works. We like to progress through emotion and connection and unity. And uh, it's not a complete opposite. Like their race doesn't connect through unifying and working together. It's just that that unity, that overall consciousness doesn't have the heart aspect that we have. The strange part is they may be doing this for power over us, over our realm, and ultimately over our spirits to the point where they want to absorb our soul energy, our heart energy, and make themselves a little bit more complete. What it comes down to is that the bases, the underground bases, are where this project, where this process takes place. They take people who are aware enough to see the psychic energy, they take them down there using, as it's been explained recently, cloning technology and mind-to-mind -mind transfer using microwaves, radiation, some type of, somehow they figured out how to isolate and actually locate and manipulate what consciousness energy is. They call it a bio mind. They don't call it a soul or anything. It's a bio mind to them. So there's a whole scientific working model of it. It's starting to come out now. It's starting to be released. This is a phase of awakening. I'm supposed to tell you everything that I've experienced. Everybody else that's out there that experienced these things is supposed to tell you the same thing. They're probably millions of targeted individuals, as you can see through Facebook and the internet and all the people coming out. Um, I'm not sure if everyone's been down there. I do know they have the whole, all the movies are just games they're playing with us to see if we can catch on. The whole Men in Black Neuralizer. Yeah, they had that. They had that since they started this because that's what they used to make it so that memories basically go into a big white portal in your head and then to get back to that, you have to be triggered and awakened and pushed and pushed through therapy, basically, until you remember. Other than that, you don't remember. It's out of your mind. Somehow we pushed and were, I guess, allowed to awaken everyone who, who remembers. And on top of that, when it was really happening, it, the blocks didn't work anyway. We would wake up down there in the tunnels and the caves, strapped up, and not all of it would get washed out. Not all of it. So we'd have, normally, if it's repressed, you have symptoms of the actual event but you don't know what it is. So there's depression, erratic behavior, um, sickness or triggered to certain situations, a horror movie where the people get tortured and uh, emotional attachment. You have all these disturbances, but, and again, they do tend to get healed when you re un unsuppress the memory and stop repressing it yourself and begin to, to heal um, because everything they do down there is based upon the heart chakra. Bernie Mac did speak out on the cloning. He did, um, he, he did try to do something about it. I know because I was there and I saw it. And it's pretty hard to talk about. Um, I remember him with a cigar in his mouth telling us that we're going to get out of here or whatever. He's going to help people. And uh, it's really painful to talk about because they killed him. And you don't see people down there that actually care. He had a heart. I don't know how he got down there. I don't know who, how, who convinced him or what, or what kind of pleasure, vacation, or money, or whatever they put in front of his face, because he didn't belong there, he didn't have much to do with anything there. It's also interesting, because I don't know what the fuck he was there, what he was actually doing there. But he couldn't basically perform the heartless acts of torture. Um, and a lot of it kind of comes back to people being there that almost don't need to be there, that are kind of like drawn into it, and then everybody else, for the most part, is there and um, pretty much taking, taking part in it. So it's rare that you'll see somebody not able to do that, but a lot of times you'll see people that pretty much don't want to be there and are just there because they have to. And a lot of times they'll get 
caught up in it. That's basically one thing I wanted to say there instead of beating around the bush. You don't dream up fucking memories like that and they don't come back month, day after day, month after month. And then people across the world don't talk about them. It doesn't have to do with all this. These things that happened through history from World War II and the Nazi rules going over to uh, Nazi scientists going over to Antarctica and Admiral Byrd sending uh, 4,600 Marines and then coming back saying UFO ships shot down his, his planes and chopped a warship in half with a laser. If that's all a conspiracy, then all of our hi history is just one big, you know, not a conspiracy, but a theory, and it's in inaccurate, then all of our history is inaccurate, whether we're, we think it is one way or the other, because our symbols all throughout history, all the way to ancient Egypt. You can look, you can see it if you open your eyes. Um, and, um, so that is the story. We were told, we were like debriefed. That's what they do to people. They just mess with you and show you the truth. And then if you don't tell people or if you don't do anything positive with it, they use that as proof to say, look at these humans, look at the people, even if they're not, you know, something else. If, if there's people, they say, look at these people that they don't even fucking care about themselves. Basically, non, uh, like silence or inaction, according to them, is consent. And that kind of is. If somebody's in your house making a fucking sandwich, and you literally don't know this person, but you just go back to bed and don't say anything, you're fucking allowing it. That's how it works. Um, it's basically that simple, because we've been here growing and learning. And essentially ignoring all the truths and the, the, the symbols that come out and all the whistleblowers, even though the people that tell us to ignore it feed us poison and bullshit and degrade the society uh, emotionally, even spiritually and psychically. They destroy the economy, um, change up the laws to fit themselves, push poison and bullshit out the media, polluted the education system, push poison through the um, uh, medicinal system. The judicial system is corrupt to so fucking put prisoners in power, I mean, uh, corrupt in power and they put the people that try to help, basically, wherever they, <laughs> wherever they go, it's, it's all right in front of us. No one's ever fucked with you other than allowing you to ignore the fact that this whole fucking thing is happening right in front of all of humanity, all of the time. It might not be directly in front of our faces everywhere, but if you live in another country where you can see these things going on and you can look at how this pattern of dominance through technolo technology and media is fucking spreading faster than anything, any force on the world. It's spreading faster than human panic. That's because it's controlled, and of course it's controlled by those with money and, and power to do such a thing, but you look at the fruits that are produced, whether these people that are leading us down this path with technology and goods and economy and this that are actually intending to help us or whether they're saving the good shit for themselves and giving all the poison to the people. It's a big trip in a way. It's a big trip down a rabbit hole because you can live your whole life thinking everything is as it's been explained to you. And literally, once it starts to unravel, if you don't know what's happening or why it's happening, it feels like reality is breaking apart and crumbling. In a way, we're lucky to have these experiences because we knew from the first fucking day shit isn't what it seems. Nothing is. And I think we also had these experiences probably because we inherently always knew that something was wrong or that there's more to reality than just the physical sense because you don't have to go to school and have them bullshit you to realize things aren't as they seem. You can just live in a body and know we're more like an eternal spirit and physicality is temporary and our minds teach us this, our emotions, everything teaches us this. We have to let go and learn to grow. What does the society teach us? It teaches us to hold the fuck on, to grab everything and hold on, gather more wealth, you know, take as many pictures as you can. Um, it's completely opposing a free world, if you would, a free spirited world where people don't have to struggle because other people want to have more benefits more pleasure and more power in a, a system that's really arbitrary because we can all be powerful and pleasure, you know, not pleasure, but we can be at peace and have all, all the, the fun really we want in the world if we stick, stick to loving each other. 
And again, it does come down to some pretty heavy shit with the possibility of another race that probably has always been here, and uh, they don't. They evolved reptilians, so they don't have the heart chakra. An, an alligator wouldn't shed tears because it had to eat its young or something like you know. It's not. It just doesn't happen. I'm gonna say the, another. You've probably already heard that, but I'll say something else that I don't hear people saying, which is what it was explained to me and what I was in, uh, receiving through intuition pretty much before all this happened and probably led to this happening. Them targeting people who are doing aware of these things. The I always explain it like this. An alien is something foreign. If you're an alien in, in a location, that means you're foreign to there. So any terrestrial beings that are like humans, that live like us and love like us, they're not aliens. They're, they're basically our brothers and sisters, our family. So with that said, there are reports and experiences of both the grilled reptilian type, troglodyte types. Uh, we've seen some shit. We'll start talking about it more and more, but they're down in the caves. They've been there for years. Every story about a night slaying a dragon or the castle having a dungeon with a dragon where they feed the fucking poor guy that pissed off the king to him. It all comes back to them living near the caves and making deals with these reptilians all throughout fucking history. That's how it works. Don't believe them. Don't believe me. Ask them. Well, don't ask them. <laughs> um, it's, all about, it's all about truth and, and not really having fear about the universe that we live in because your own mind is capable of creating complexities of all these things and, you know, leading you to, into a kind of labyrinth just, be, just because of wondering who you are. So you shouldn't be afraid just because there are other beings here that the universe is, the world, the physical world is far more advanced and far more vast than some guy told you, who also wanted your money and your power, while keeping the truth for himself and his family. Basically, with the ones that look like, like us, it seems most logical to assume, and it, it was explained, and I did, uh, I've, I've seen some things as well. They may be the human race that survives this invasion and basically made it to the future. With the people that are apparently manipulating time for negative purposes, using lower chakra traumatization schemes, thievery, deception, basically, they're similarly from what we would call the future, but it's another race, and they're coming back to try and secure their position in that future realm. If you don't know about how this works with time and the realities and that there are more than one happening right now and you're spread out throughout them but your consciousness is pretty much condensing to whichever reality you prefer based upon your energetic signature and what thoughts and perceptions you allow then you have to do your own personal research and go into that the, i'll just say right now the, the fucking navy the air force and uh the nazis all that they didn't go to the moon they never that never happened they didn't care well, i'm just going to say that they didn't they didn't care it was to pretend to distract you so you didn't see them flying 6,000 kilometer a mile per hour fucking anti, not even anti-grav, they call it some type of gravitic drive or something, technology. These cracks. Just to explain away what's going on with all the, this, the advancement. But they found out how to fucking time travel. They found out how to time travel, how to bend space and time, uh, bend gravity waves and, and uh, propel yourself through the air, through that in a craft, canceling out the inertia, using torsion fields. I think the first one they said had a spinning mercury orb in it at 55,000 RPM, and that at certain speeds you get it down to a, a, a superconducts, or it acts like a superfluid, there's no friction, and since it's magnetic or electromagnetic, you, they do something and it uh, becomes superconductive, and the superconductive properties of all the phenomenons of the metals and whatever that they put together is what allows Basically, you put all those glitches together, lens effect, dilation, um, this, so many other ones that they explain. It's like six major ones. And, and they all look like little tricks on YouTube. The magnet floating down the tube, creating a, basically a magnetic interference pattern, and it magnet seems like it floats down. They use every little bit to get quantum tunneling, superconducting proper, or superconductive properties, and Basically, they found out how to use, tap in the zero point field and use it to power their craft as well as to manipulate space, and that equals teleportation and time travel. As well as mind, uh, your mind can basically operate this energy if the craft is producing it, and so your mind is essentially, I don't know how to describe it, but if you're in that craft and you look at the ground and you want the ground to do something, the craft could put out a beam that would do that. 
um, it's, it's powered by mind. And it goes much deeper than that. When they're inside the craft, you have to be on the same consciousness as them, or they would probably do something different to contain some shit. But basically, everyone turns into one consciousness inside the craft. You all melt into one ball of light. So everybody's minds is together. Which is also dangerous for them doing that, for the types of people that are potentially in these crafts and what this would enable them to do. They could create basically a reality to live inside. And it's kind of interesting thinking about a huge UFO traveling around the earth that there could be a basically a huge realm inside of it and you know, hopefully they're benevolent and positive and it would be like a universe within a universe. Uh, reality bubbles hovering outside in physical reality but in that craft you'd have access to all the other realities. It's like the, it brings a wormhole idea. Basically the ones that look human and are glowing and tend to have light rainbow stuff coming out of their chakra systems and don't torture or do the weird shit, basically don't rape humans, they're apparently the humans from the future that survived this shit and are coming back to do the same thing that the reptilians are doing, but the opposite, and they're trying to make sure that humanity survives. Why does it happen like that? Because that's the only way it can. Once time travel begins getting involved or becomes involved, then basically that gives that person power over that whole timeline if, if no one else knows the manipulations. And so there are laws that you, they can't they can't just come down and then we're all fucking in cages. No, that would break some, some balance of the structure of why we're actually here and it would stop, it wouldn't be allowed. Somebody's in control. This is only being allowed because we're allowing it. But in that same sense, if they get us through this timeline, time travel technology, to basically fall into delusion and create that timeline, they can't be blamed. They tricked us, but they still it still happened. They didn't force us to do it. But that's how you could definitely create a universe and a pull of a society into a foreign timeline where, you know, 50 years ago, shit was a little bit better. And 100 years, 50 years later, they have no fucking idea how they got there. It's because somebody's manipulating people's minds and getting decisions and probabilities to change and changing the timeline. That's what MK Ultra is. That's what the monarch mind control is. That's what taking kids to the underground bases is. They're, they're able to look into the future and see the kids and the people that would grow up to be people that would change the system and they fucking go back and change that. They say it's for a plan for God to bring out a culling of the races, the species, because uh, the species got mixed long ago, and that's also what they're trying to do, is genetically mix the two species to create a, a super race or a third race that would, I don't know, perform one of their world tasks or some shit, maybe be fucking impervious to the weakness of, of either side, but I don't think humans have a weakness, I think we're just vulnerable because we don't know how strong we are because people have been bullshitting us through our entire lives and essentially fucking lying to us and uh, degrading us, abusing us. Our society is based on that. But the life here is based upon what we can pass on to each other. A continuation is always about what's next. So uh, I'm just going to leave it with that. The way it's broken down is that the good, benevolent ETs are humanoids, humans from the future that realized what was happening, probably seen some effects coming down the timeline and use the same easy technology tapping into the zero point field. I'll go into that later once I figure out the best way to produce what I do know about how it works in a legible manner. Um, and uh, they're coming back in this time travel operation to essentially offer humanity a hand, a, a, an assistance to, to climb out of their own, the grave that we're digging for ourselves, that humanity's digging for themselves. And it's because there's a little guy on the side whispering into humanity's ears, putting up all these light-filled messages and images through the media and hypnotism and the, uh, the air. Um, but the problem is it's working. People are fucking killing the, the entire planet off, so we have to do something. If you care. If you don't care, then that's fine. You're in the perfect place. You're in the perfect position to experience that, and that's why we're here. If you do care, we have to say something about it. Pretend to believe that we're literally just uh, an accident of an animal that talks and pretends it's, it's conscious and thinks it's self-aware, because guess what, the people that are telling you that are doing that so that you act like an animal and you act like you're ignorant so they can abuse you. That's why they're telling you that. We're really not an animal, we're not an accident, and our creation is a big fucking... It's confusing because apparently, once time travel gets into the mix, everything mixes up. Somehow we basically caused our own 
formation out of history based upon our connection with the future race that's ourselves coming back in time. Which is fucked up, but honestly, it's how they do it. Because when they come to you, well, not you, but when they come to people, the people they have, they show them the future. They show them the possibilities that could happen, and they get them literally to jump into the one that's not the best, the one that they want. And yeah, I'm being serious, that's the truth. They have a fucking helmet you can, they can put on and blast the shit out on the screen, and they can see your possible futures down to the fucking words I'm reading on the screen above the camera right now. They can show you that, and you'll remember it when you see it again, but they do that to play with you, basically... You can't you can't avoid it if you if you see it if you connect with it you avoid it by connecting to something else if you if you connect with it and you try to avoid it by basing your actions off of something you saw you force it to happen it happens on accident it happens and it always happens that way and this is a big deal with I think it was the Navy or the Air Force that was doing this at first because they kept seeing the fucking out of the world they'd send soldiers in there they look they see a fucking nuke blow everything up so they're trying to stop the shit erase the shit and now look how close we are so but again the other I was told in another way that uh, nukes won't be allowed to be used, but uh, I'm not going to say anything yet. <sighs> that was a little bit. There's a lot more. Bernie Mac was good. He probably, I guess he is good. Um, this all has to do with time travel. Um, they, The humans that can help us possibly could be from the future, are literally the, the future survivors of the human race. It'll all play out. It'll all be made apparent to everybody. Um, but we have to Look, if we go like this, when the shit's coming down, they don't care. They're, I mean, no one's going to be able to affect us. No one's going to be able to come into our reality, even ourselves, our own presence, to stop what's going to happen. But if we look up and act like we care and uh, actually care and act on it, then we're way more powerful than anyone's been led to believe. Um, way more powerful. I'm not going to say it, 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 invincible. Maybe, maybe not even immortal, but it's beyond what science says a human should be uh, capable of doing. We're reality generators. We, if we put our heads together, we can literally force the change that we want to see to happen without actually having a, a, a physical, linear cause, cause and effect reality to describe it. It would be like a miracle. And uh, that's what we got to do, basically. But I don't want to say any more than that, so I'll just let it go and see uh, see what people think. Thank you. Because everything they do down there is based upon the heart chakra. It's based upon getting you into a, a vulnerable, loving, tender state and ripping that from you in any way that you've seen in the movies, in horrors, in your nightmares, probably beyond anything you can imagine in your nightmares. Imagine, again, they have mind tech using this technology. Um, they can basically pull... It all started years ago like, with the electrodes on the brain where you could sense the electromagnetic energy, the uh, ultra low frequencies coming out of the brain, the low hertz, detect then where the heat is activating, where uh, where the electricity is, and then you can see the emotions, the thought, uh, not yet the thoughts, but you can see the emotions and what kind of state, whether the basics of it, whether they're angry or sad or distracted, you know. And that got more and more refined until they can pull the exact emotions, and I think before it went from there, they turned it around and said, okay, well, let's put electrodes, uh, not electrodes, but... Uh, Electromagnets and create that field into the brain to see if we can recreate emotions, recreate everything that we could detect out of that. So they got that, and they can actually, you know, using a helmet, they can make you go into a god state. They can make you feel fear. They pulse it into the amygdala, and uh, amygdala, and it um, it creates the, a maximal fear effect in whatever hallucinations that person will then begin taking on in whatever hell realm they send this person into. They say they're doing it so that a switch happens, a, a key and unlocking and enlightening, which is when the, the brain decides that the amygdala no longer has relevant information and it turns all the fear, switches it and turns it into enlightenment, into power. That doesn't work for everybody. Maybe over time, but there are people that are not, uh, they're not doing that, they're just getting tortured to fucking hell and being put in left in hell, and when they come back here, it doesn't matter, because if their soul, if their mind, if their heart is down there, they're not here. They're stuck in time, in memory, and whoever you're interacting with is not that person. They're not possessed, but they're just lost in their own mind. This is what they're doing to people. Apparently, it's a part of a larger plan that these people will, in a way, either help humanity, uh, the, the targeted, tortured individuals, and uh, 
through that, the torturers basically claim they're helping humanity by waking these people up. I'm not sure how that works. But, uh, so once they figure out they could put electromagnets into the, in the helmet and get you into any state you could imagine, it extended all the way from there to the point where they use scalar wave grids, basically, making the brain act as a, uh, I think it's a sine wave, I'm not sure. But they turn the air in your mind into a carrier wave. I don't think that's how it is. The, the scalar grid becomes a carrier wave. And then they, if your brain vibrates at the same rate as the grid, they basically have a an external internal network. And they can beam a frequency into the scalar grid, which will essentially, like a, a fractal or like a vortice, it will spread to every area of that grid. So then if they have the frequency of fear and you're within this grid, you know, within your house, wherever, two beams are setting up and getting an interference pattern and they beam in that fear technology from the last time you experienced fear and because they can pull the, the same thing, then you, you'll you feel that. And literally, you can tell it feels like a, uh, I know how to define it now and I can actually reverse it and that's why I'm coming out now. Once you know, they specifically target the areas of the brain that if we learn how to operate the brain and the energy system fully, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like a, a game at that point. You can see exactly what they're doing, when they're doing it, how they're doing it, and you can uh, reverse the process or stabilize yourself and your own energies and get back to consistency and awareness and not this um, emotional disturbance and mental disturbance of our lives. The other point is that they're doing this so we think about it, so we are distracted with what they're doing versus what we're really put here for, which apparently is beyond anything anyone can imagine. We are, in a way, reality generators. We create what we experience. It happens in a delay in this realm, physicality, but it's still what happens. Nobody decides what happens for you. We all decide. That's the whole point. Um, I'm also coming up about this because when I was having these experiences, which lasted from the age of 10 all the way to about 14, then again at 18, then at 20, and then at 23, and it was 16 years. But at those times, I met them out in public in physical reality, talking, walking, shaking hands, exchanging knowledge, asking them what the fuck this was really all about, because I was fighting it. But the future can go two ways, where we have this unified system, with or without the stuff we don't want in it, but it's just that humans are unified. Or we can go further into disarray to the point of collapse, to the point of that unification comes with the survivors of that fucking terrible collapse. So this is the time where we're going to decide. And all the people coming out and talking about this now are going to help us decide. Um, help fill in the blanks for the people that don't know what's going on, whether it's real, what all these hints are, what all these conspiracies are, what all these theories are. In, in motion, in energy, in a type of complex interference pattern grid that creates this delay of time and physicality, and it's like a computer system. But the essence of that is love and, and thought and, and awareness, truth. Um, they know this at the highest levels. They basically tortured us to get us to bring God into this reality. When we're at the depths of the breaking point of pain, suffering, and torture, we call upon God, and they see the glory and they feel like they're doing the right thing, or whatever. And, and, the, and again, that's one way of looking at it. The other way is, and it's the binary consciousness, as if you put it into material form, and it can do anything, look like anything, but it has no soul, it has no humanity, it has no heart. So it wouldn't understand our point of view at that point, and it would see us as a kind of something that has to be worked out in order for its power to be full, fully realized. In the same sense, it's the same thing for us. That negative energy on this planet and in us is something to work out before our power can be fully realized. I don't know how it works out like that. It's kind of paradoxical, but all is possible. We can allow it to take us over, or we can allow ourselves to experience the truth of God and essentially fight the drain on our heart chakra. So um, brings me to another point, which is that, that the... Uh, Another way is explained, and I, they, a lot of what they do is eroticism and, uh, like, just the, it's the most perverted stuff on the planet. And they try to do it. They built it for thousands of years to the point where it's beyond anything we can imagine. And it's because these things, nanotech drains the heart. Um, so, what they do through the torture, 
They attack the mind and they attack the heart. They can attack the body, but it doesn't really. Old style that work, for instance, uh, you know, Soviet uh, disappearances and Holocaust type situations all throughout history from the Asian side to the Russians and Germans to shit's going on in America to South and Africa and all that. And they do play politic, pol political god, apartheid and all these movements and motions. It's essentially all the, this central archonic authority tricking people. That's most of what our society is. Most of our movements, most of our releases, most of our released technology since the 30s or 40s, it's all been bullshit. It's all been faked and fucking slowly released. I'll talk about the heart chakra to sacral chakra tie now, but the high end technology is another great portion of this because I'll just say this the original internet that they have was a screen just like this a screen, but you'd look into it and shake hands with the person that was on the other side and then close it and they're gone. Is a fucking box that you could teleport a wormhole through and talk to people and hand files over and fucking food over if you needed. Shit is crazy. But that's the original technology. They gave us this breaking down the energy into binary uh, pulse radio wave electronic form, which breaks down into bits and bytes and, you know, spectrums. And do do it's the most degraded form of what the whole version of it could be. If you see how the whole thing works, it's basically consciousness. They took conscious energy and then you turn that into a computer and that becomes the internet. Well, then everything you see and feel becomes perceived on the other side. It's like a much more intelligent version. If you take down that one aspect of consciousness, the visible light, and break it down into an electrical uh, component, and put that in a circuit, put that in a wire, you can split it back up into ones and zeros, get it to come back uh, as a visible light, and you have the screen. But it's like a, it's still beautiful. It's a painting. You can see everything that's there. But imagine if I could shake your hand right now and it was a live screen. That's the true technology. And it doesn't use the ones and zeros of just a, a binary spectrum of electricity. It uses whatever this energy is that they haven't really said, which is, we know it as consciousness. They found it as an energy source, as an actual scientific manipulable uh, energy that they can manipulate. And they made these devices with it. They, everything is based off of it. Everything is based off of the consciousness device. It's scalar wave tech. So it's just Tesla had to do with the scalar wave tech. He figured it out. We could have had free energy. I mean, not free energy, but energy that you could have charged all your devices from some water tower over there looking thing. And of course, you read this whole story. They blew up his towers, locked them away. He died old and poor in a, you know, a shack somewhere. And the business partners that helped him get caught up and shut down that obviously made lesser inventions and couldn't even grasp his intelligence. They set him up. Big scam. And uh, he invented not only the AC current and the generator for that, which we all use today, it runs our society, but he invented the fucking scalar wave tech that could make everything infinitely more powerful. Um, the main thing about that is they don't want to release technology until A, people are smart enough to handle it and not instantly go realize they could do anything and all of a sudden you have 10 world wars going on at once. Um, and B, they don't want people to get that technology and then come after them and destroy them. So it's again a paradox. We, it just it continues until we figure out what the fuck we're going to do and stop bullshitting. So that's what it is. Through these torture moments, through these rituals, through these events, they, uh, they get your heart and they get your mind. All it has to do is a focus point. The picture is hypnotism. It's all hypnotism from the Nazi uh, scientists after World War II. They take a, a, a image, whatever it is, and they can have it there. And if they say they torture you with a picture of, you know, someone in your family or something, you'll be encoded with fear now as that is the trigger point. And it'll especially happen if they flash you then and you don't realize that. And now, you know, every time you see this person, you kind of, you have a subconscious awareness of being tortured. It's all hypnosis and tricking the mind. But if they get this way where they take your heart and your love, and your psychedelics are used commonly, they're torture mind control substances and hypnotics then you'll basically, your emotions will drain. Essentially, if they much is, again, if you're tortured on a rack, you don't really have much of a choice. What they do is they tie the heart chakra energy into the sacral sexual energy. This is how they exist and see life. When they participate in sexual, mental, or heart-filled energy, the only way they can feel love or heart energy, what we call life and awareness, is to torture, molest, and rape someone. That's how they do it. <clears throat> and it's because 
when your heart is drained, love as a, as an experience is just a sensation. It's just a binary sensation of contact and self through self gratification. And the easiest ways to do that is to hurt somebody or take it from them and physically feel that person's energy going down as yours goes up or theirs. Because most people can't do that. We're designed to see that and feel empathy. These people, these uh, are essentially the psychopaths, but it goes much deeper than just a type of person or a brain thing. I'm pretty sure it's a brain parasite that's been here for thousands of years. But um, these are the psychopaths where they did the studies. They had the brain electrodes, and then if you show, uh, they show them a, a scene of horror, or war, or whatever. Normal person, they get a little bit of fear activity, and they're kind of shocked. It's disgusting, and they show the psychopath like a serial killer in prison, whatever, there's no brain activity. They show somebody dying, a horror movie or whatever, and they're just completely the same. They can't feel. There's no heart chakra there. So they had this process done to them through their monarch, microphone, child abuse, all that shit. And through this, and it's through this spiritual force. Um, I just lost my place. But yeah, that, through all these things, that's how they... See, like, maybe the first one of them were born, because they say the bloodlines come from... Maybe they didn't have the heart chakra, and were direct to God. Uh, I'm not sure how far it goes back after that, if there's in space that planted the, them here, or if it's just, like, a one-time thing, or if it's a parasite. But they say the black nanotech parasite came from uh, underground, and the other thing is I don't really think anything comes from space. You don't travel through... Fucking, you don't go anywhere. There's, you can't thrust to any stars. It's not how it works. It's impossible. The, the the shield around space is literally the blackness of space itself. To get to space, you, they use wormholes basically, or to get to planes. It's all plane travel, wormhole travel, stargate travel, or teleportation, or uh, shifting into a higher vibrational state and of a, within a craft. I don't mean your body through love, but within a craft that builds these these gateways and teleporting through that, nobody flies anywhere. I mean, it's not even, it doesn't even make sense. And so, I guess that's a good start, right? Um, there's so much more. 16 years of it, it culminated with me essentially going through a death experience, and I don't mean a near-death experience or more, more drugs or anything like that. Uh, I pretty much uh, was sent to hell. And uh, I... I lived, uh, this is going to be another video, but it culminated, there were so many more things to talk about, um, from the higher dimensional realms, these glowing human entities that seem to be actual heart chakra, you know, risen entities, like humans, like us, but they're, they're loving, they're not like them, um, all this protection that's around the angels that I saw, to the point where, when I was 20 years old, I basically died in front of them in one of these processes. You could call it a ritual. Um, I was revived, but from my perspective, I was gone for like a few seconds apparently, but from my perspective I died, and I went into Archon Hell, the type of cyborg hell, basically. And the cyborg hell is described as being cloned over and over again and never being able to die or leave the chambers. This was literally those entities that do that. I was in their spiritual realm. I was with their family of darkness. I was with them. And what happened is they beamed me somehow with their psychic energy, and I lived thousands upon thousands of waking dreams that were more real than this life right now, to the point where I'm really almost confused. But I've heard, luckily I've heard shit like that before about near death, about all the archons, and then you wake up out of it and rise up. But it, it, it uh, changed me to a high degree, more than being tortured for 16 years. That was the culmination of it. These Archon things appear as men would do. And they took me into their realm and put me to sleep. And it's apparently that's what they do. They put. But what happened was I went into the dark, deepest, darkest realm. I dreamt that I woke up and was alive and went on to live my life. And that was after 30 or 40 times of waking up, believing I was waking up and realizing what was happening and seeing these beings and stuff. And then... They beam me, and I'm falling back asleep away from me. I did that 30, 40 times in these fake, unreal realities where I'm trying. I was in the same position, but I was trying to get out of what was happening, and it was like a labyrinth. It was a maze. It was like the bubbles within bubbles within bubbles of the universe, but I didn't have direction because my heart. And um, essentially condemned me. It got me to condemn myself with mortal sin. And uh, 
So this went on, and at first those dreams lasted me waking up a few seconds go by a minute, and then I wake up again, or I'm dreaming again. I'm in this fucking hell realm where I can't wake up. And that went on 30, 40 times like that, and then I would wake up, and I would go out and escape and run away and live life. And I'd crash my car, die, and then I'd be back with them in the hell realm, and they'd be like, try again. It went on for fucking years. It went on forever. It went on for an eternity. I tried all the experiences, all the possibilities, all the perceptions that I know in this real life, and I kept waking up back in their grasp as they dragged me down to the depths of the abyss. Eventually it happened and I died and I went all the way down. And I don't mean physically, I was already apparently dead that whole time. And I was imagining myself waking up and talking to people saying, come get me and wake me up, I'm alive, I'm here, I'm alive. And they didn't know any of that. But when I came back and I spoke to them, I told them about their fears and their secrets and I calmed them. They said, how do you know this shit? This is exactly what we feel. I apparently was in the realm of spirit where everything is seen. But I was getting dragged down with these things. I literally had children, lived lives, died, grew old, all this crazy shit, and they kept bringing me back, and we're like, nope, you still didn't learn. It was the fucking craziest shit ever. At that point, they were like, alright, you're done, your soul's up, your time's up. I felt, it's like in the movies, or that, the vanishing point, vanishing on Seventh Street movie, where, uh, when they go into the dark, they just refuse to sing, I exist, I exist, I exist, I'm, I'm me and that, and then they forget it and just dissolve into nothing. That was what it was. I wasn't saying I just, I said, I was wondering, what is this? What am I? And it wasn't like I'm in a different realm. I was process the realm. It was like, I was seeing all my lives live over and over again. I was like, what am I? Who has control of me where I can't, I'm not even in control of myself. I'm not living. I'm not, I'm in this dream world. Maybe those were lives. They were teleporting themselves through the universe, living out as me as they had my soul. I don't know. But when it got down to it and I was dissolving and I knew when I tried to wake up again and it happened again, I was just going to give up. I was going to go to sleep forever. I was, wasn't going to keep running around and coming back to them. And I saw it was going to happen. And then I, something happened and I cried out to like love, to God essence, to something higher. And the sky in this realm cracked and the light projected down and bounced off the faces of these Archon beings. And into me, into my vision was projected angels. It was the Archon beings that dressed as anything that they want to, except they were loving. They came to me as shit, the beings that I would uh, be comfortable with. And they were clean. They were pure. They were glowing. The, the other people, they're normal. They look, you know, the Illuminati. They, they look normal and like rich folk, folks. And the, these things that came through were like clean, shining, pretty humans. There was no essence, evil essence on them in it at all. And the, what really got me is I'm talking to these beings as I'm like weeping and dying and in hell. And they're like, no, nope, we're from God. We're here to, to save you or stop this or give you the chance, the opportunity to turn away. And I was literally, before that, I was in like this hell of not even crying, just like mindlessness. And I was weeping with emotion. I, basically, they came and they sparked my heart chakra again. They started, they jump started it. So I didn't die. Somehow that happened. They said, God is the supreme being, the creator of this reality. He loves all his children, all his creations, and it's to the point where it's so powerful if you were to feel it. And the degree that we don't know how to love ourselves, his love would overpower us and we'd fucking forget who we are altogether. It wouldn't necessarily be bad, but it wouldn't, we wouldn't finish learning here. We'd just be like, alright, fuck it, we're good, and go home. So we're here to essentially find all these things and learn these things. The Archons are playing the bad guy. The angels are there to catch you when the bad guy takes you all the way down to hell. We, I don't think we have to go that far. I think if you know the good essence, you build the good essence, none of that has to happen. I let them take my heart chakra, and I let them take my mind, and uh, I was gone for 16 years in the uh, like memory suppression. When this event happened at 21, or 20, actually, I was gone for eons. I, I, there's a, I don't remember who I was before that. I do. I was stupid and angsty, but I don't... I don't know who that was. I don't know what the energy of that was. I know me as a child, it feels like I'm here again, like I'm a kid again, like I was born again. And I have to learn now, just like I'm taking first steps, everything that I'm doing and everything that I'm remembering, and remember what I learned and, and don't go back into the, the dark. It all has to do with the, the dark and the light, that we shine our own light on reality when your heart is awakened.